What's up everybody, Brick Sanchez here today with another Building LEGO Hogwarts episode and in today's episode I'm going to show you my extended, fully lit and fully motorized Hogwarts Express and I'm also going to show you how you can do the same to yours. Now if you're interested in this be sure to stick around but before we go any further be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell as well and be sure to check out some of my other videos if you're interested in seeing the progress of my LEGO city and Hogwarts area of course. Alright, now first off I'm just gonna show you what the train looks like. Now it's pretty hard because it's a pretty long train and uh, I don't really have a great area to show it to you guys, but I'm gonna try my best anyways. Uh, so yeah, either way this is an overall view as you can see I've added in the Fort Anglia there. It's also lit up, now you can also see we got two of the coal carts and then in the back we got two of the passenger wagons in there. Uh, so yeah, now I'm gonna search a spot where I can show you the train in its entirety. Alright, so in this part of the city I can show you the full train. Now we're also going to take a closer look at the insides because uh, every wagon here has um, an interior which references a different movie, uh, as well as the car up front of course. So yeah, now let's take a little closer look at that. Alright, starting off up front out here with the first scene that we got here. Uh, this is from the second movie, The Chamber of Secrets. And now uh, Ron and Harry are flying this stolen Ford Anglia uh, and they are in search of the Hogwarts Express. Now, they uh, drive along the tracks along a bridge and all of a sudden they notice that the train is not in front of them but it is behind them. Uh, so yeah, I saw this, I saw someone doing this, um, so adding the Ford onto some track and uh, putting it in front of the Hogwarts Express and I just thought it looked so cool. Uh, so yeah, I did that as well. Now we also upgraded it with some lights, of course. Um, so you can see underneath how that works, that's just like this uh, type of circuit board there. All right, now moving on with the locomotive, which is the first part, the actual first part of the train. I'm gonna try to detach that. You can see the cable there. Um, which runs electricity through all the wagons here. Now we got two lights up front and one light out there, which is very cool looking. Now uh, you gotta know lighting up a train is one of the hardest things to do. It's also pretty difficult to uh, detach the wagons and stuff if you would like to uh, transport it or something. But this is gonna be my main city train, so it should stay in here permanently. Now for the rest, this one doesn't, doesn't have any other lights in here. Unfortunately, I had this custom kit and I didn't have any light to go in there anymore so uh, but either way i don't think it's that much of a problem all right now for this first coal cart out here uh, this is the one that features the hub or the battery box uh, as i like to call it now this is an extended version from the original set original set is eight studs wide mine is 10 studs wide and so that's just to house in this little hub out there now the hub leads to a motor out here but it also leads to a secondary motor out here because we have an extra wagon there and uh, in the beginning only one using one motor just uh, uh made it struggle a bit so anyways, now it's uh, running a lot smoother. Now I still have to replace the batteries. I'm also gonna show you guys how to do it now. Uh, but yeah, on the top here, I've also added in some of these one by one plates because it's uh, a white box. And uh, elsewise you would see like all of the white and it wouldn't really look realistic. Now you can of course still see these cables, but they're also black. So I think that it kind of, uh, it's kind of a bit better uh, or the best camouflage I could do uh, with it. All right, so now I'm gonna quickly show you how to replace these batteries here. First off, I take off this little thing out here which holds down the cable, so this piece out here. Then of course we have to unplug the cables, like this, like this, just leave them hanging out there, Ugh, like that. Now, then you can take this out like this, and I would also always suggest to not have these ones tightened up so you can just easily remove them. So yeah, that's it, just do it in reverse to put it back. So <laughs> pretty easy, now I'm quickly gonna replace these. So now the second coal cart out here has a train motor, as I've said before, underneath here. Now this also features um, the battery box, which is used for the light kit. So there's a battery box, which has a USB plug. And um, the USB from the lights go into this little box here. Now I still kind of have to tweak, tweak this a bit because um, the sides here are sometimes a bit strained uh, or something like that. But anyway, I'm going to show you this as well because I've been quite lazy with covering this one up also because I need to access the uh, on off button for this battery box and I have to access it uh, easily so it's pretty hard to really get it um, camouflaged up but I think it still looks pretty okay the battery box is black so it kind of looks like uh, it's a pile of coal all right now for the first passenger wagon we have out here now I've slightly modified this version 
um, a little bit because it has now now it has two of these train wheels on each side and these move independently as well um, let me try to show it to you guys so you can see they, they move because I was having some troubles um, with the train derailing and I thought it was because of this and now I didn't have any more problems since I've uh, changed this uh, but so yeah now let's take a look at the interior of this wagon uh, this wagon is referencing the first movie so the Philosopher's Stone um, with the light kit I can still remove the the roof here so now you can see what that looks like if you use some one by twos to get the cables uh, stuck in there so you don't see them to the windows but anyway I'm gonna quickly remove this first thing out here or this wall and now we can take a look and on the inside of the terrain here so yeah on the left side you can see Hermione there waiting her turn to enter the little cabin of uh, Ron, and <laughs> Ron and Harry there now you can also see the uh, the trolley lady here with a, a little updated trolley just so it could fit inside here so this trolley I think it looks pretty okay it's just uh, one brick uh, wide so yeah I can put it down here and then we have the lady here of course and then out here we have Ron with the chocolate frog and then we have Harry out here with his wizard card, which is Dumbledore, of course. Uh, and then out here, I really wanted to add in the chocolate frog on the outside of the train at first. For some people, it might be a good idea still, but uh, that meant that my train couldn't fit through all of the tunnels and stuff that we have out here in the layout. So that didn't seem like a good idea, but I, th I thought it looked pretty good. But yeah, I had to remove it. But yeah, that was the first wagon here. As you can see, it's pretty easy to put in this wall and remove the wall as well. All right, so now we're getting to the second passenger wagon out here. And this one is referencing the third movie, so that's the Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, now on the inside we have on the left side uh, Ron and Hermione, on the right side we have Remus and uh, uh, Harry. Now these two should be together in the same cabin, but obviously the train is too small for that, so I just put them uh, separately out here. Now on the right side you can see Lupin who's giving this chocolate, now it's pretty hard, let me try to focus. Um, he's giving this chocolate out here to uh, Harry, you know that scene from when he was attacked by the Dementor, and then he got some chocolate after that. So yeah, there's not nothing really special out here, but the actual uh, Easter egg for this third movie is on the uh, the end of the train. So if I go a bit further out here, you can see this Dementor which is chasing the train, and it just looks very funny when it's uh, when the train is driving around. So I thought that would look pretty cool. I haven't seen that before, so I'm not sure if it's an original idea or not. I do hope it is, but uh, it works just with this little uh, transparent bar, and it never hits anything. So uh, it looks pretty pretty funny. All right, so now you've seen the interior and exterior of my LEGO Hogwarts Express. Now I'm going to show you the modifications you will have to do, as well as the parts you will need to motorize it. All right, now the first thing you will require, of course, is the Hogwarts Express set itself. Now I highly recommend using the last one. I'm not sure if this, uh, this technique would work with the previous versions. You could try that out as well for yourself. Now you will need one or two of these sets, depending on which type you want to make, if you want to make the regular one. Or the extended one all right now the first thing you absolutely have to do in my opinion which really helps out uh, for the train not derailing and stuff is to replace all of these um, these other dodgy like technique pieces they had out there to connect the cards you will have to replace them with some regular uh, magnets that you get with the regular train uh, sets so you'll have to do that throughout all of these um, these wagons and stuff now for the passenger wagons you will have to uh, adjust these ones a bit so they will be able to turn just using a turntable or whatever or one of the older things with a pin sticking out of it you can probably make that work as well uh, but I've, I've seen and noticed that that really helps with the train not derailing so I would highly recommend that as you can see I was missing a black one out here so I had to use this grey one alright now once you've replaced all of these with the regular magnets you will have to modify this little card here the coal card so you will have to uh, expand it a little bit and make it 10 studs wide instead of 8 studs wide now once you've done that you can add in a train motor underneath here that's a regular powered up train motor and then you can put in the powered up hub up here as well so that's the white one with the green button uh, and then you can get the cable uh, I would probably suggest having it run from here to the other side so you don't have too much excess cable and up top here you can just add in this little I'm not sure what it is this little uh, bow kind of thing here which the cable runs underneath and you can also add in some coal just so you don't see that white too much now if you have two of these sets and you want to make the extended version, I highly recommend getting a secondary uh, train motor underneath here. You can see the cable running in the secondary um, input there. Now the only problem with this is that you will have to uh, use these buttons independently um, and simultaneously you will have to press them just to get the motors go uh, going at the same speed. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, the secondary one is also necessary if you would like to have a light kit just to house in the battery box. But you could probably make another wagon or an extension in the back as well. 
So now if you want to light up your regular Hogwarts Express, I would suggest buying a specific light kit for this specific set. You will also get some extra lights for the station as well. Uh, and then you can choose between probably light tailing and game of bricks are the ones that I would suggest. Now light tailing is the one that I had in here before, before my cats uh, broke <laughs> the entire Hogwarts Express and the light kit along with it. Um, so I had that before, but it's pretty hard to extend on, so you cannot put in extra light. So I could have not, not have added in the fourth and also not light up the uh, second wagon there but anyways with the brands like game of bricks and light my bricks you can always mix and match and you can always extend on to the light kit so that is what i would suggest if you're going for the uh, extended version now to power it up as i said before you have this secondary train uh, or um, coal cart out here which has a power motor but you could also maybe um, have a power bank in one of these wagons or something it all depends on what you want for yourself if you want to have some scenes inside or if you just want to have it empty and lit up but yeah, that's basically how you will have to light up this set right here. Now I do have to give a warning. Um, if you want to light up your train, I said it before, it's one of the hardest things to do. You, It's very hard to hide the cable. So if you're kind of OCD on that stuff, then I highly suggest not doing it. Um, also moving the train uh, from one track to another is very, very difficult. So I had to take it from the main cave out here on a long wooden plank because of course the cables do not come off. It would be epic if um, Game of Bricks would make a connection like this which would have some uh, electricity going through it like they have for the buildings and stuff. Now that would be sick. I might send them something about that. That would be really epic. Uh, but anyways, until then, it's very hard to move it around. So what I do is I start with the front and I slowly take it off the track and put it onto like a plank or whatever you're moving it on. Uh, so yeah, but if you're planning on changing your trains a lot and stuff, I would not suggest lighting it up because it's just such a hassle. And as I said, my other uh, train was knocked over from here and fell on the ground and all of the cables were broken so um, <laughs> if your train derails a lot I would also watch out for that so but yeah guys that was it for today's episode of building Lego Hogwarts now I hope this video will help out a lot of you to motorize your own uh, Hogwarts Express and I do hope you have enjoyed this video if you have be sure to like subscribe hit that notification bell as well and leave a comment but yeah guys thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video